please. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us here at This Week on MV. We are so excited tonight. We have Trina from Dressed MV. Now, if you haven't spoken with her before, she is one of the most fashionable people that you will ever meet in your life. And she's here to talk to us not only about fall fashion, but about how the retail industry has been affected by COVID and what you can expect to see for this year's very, very different Martha's Vineyard Fashion Week. Now, before we cut to Trina, we have a quick little tape that we're going to roll just to introduce you to her and show you more about her style. Let's go ahead and roll that tape. I'm with Trina, the publisher of Dressed MV and the director and founder of Martha's Vineyard Fashion Week. Now, being the publisher of this magazine, how often do they come out? So they come out six times per year, June, July, August, September, and then October, November is one, and then we have the holiday issue in December. So seasonal? Yes. And we have a photo shoot going on around us. It's for the upcoming issue? We do. It is for the June issue, and we have about 11 stores that we're shooting today. So it's pretty intense, but it, we have a lot of fun with it, which is really nice. And what can we find in the magazine? So you can find um, mostly where to shop, items for men, women, children, as well as home items, and sometimes we'll spotlight restaurants, designers, and you know musicians. And Fashion Week's coming up this fall. How have you been preparing for that? I know you haven't done it in a few years, so there's a lot going on, but how have you been preparing? The preparation for that has just begun. We have literally just looked at a space, um, so I have yet to nail down dates, which, which is fine. I mean, everything comes together at the end, so uh, we're just really excited about it, which is, which is good. Awesome, well, good luck and thank you. Thank you. All right, now that was a clip from last year, but it is still relevant as I know there's a lot going on within the fashion industry right now. Colin, so you have your beautiful wife here tonight. Can you please introduce everyone to Trina? Yes, I can, uh, but she's uh, she's very mad at me for making her come on the show. Uh -oh. I'm a little upset. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> well, here she is, my wife, Trina. Hi, guys. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. It's been a while. Good to see you, too. It has been a while, but, you know. These times, they're a little different these days, huh? Oh, they're so weird. But I saw that in some positive news, you had a really cute date tonight on Instagram. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I just posted that. That's hilarious. Colin, you better watch uh, out. She has a new date in town. <laughs> well, who is it, my dog? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it was such it's a little it, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Such an adorable picture. And your outfit there was awesome as well. Can you tell us what you're wearing? So I'm actually wearing a just a simple top right now from um, the Trust Shop in Vineyard Haven and just a simple pair of white pants. So I like to keep it simple and classy at all times. Try simple lines, you know, works well for me. Yeah, summer staples. So this summer has been really weird, I think, for everyone, as we were just mentioning. But um, how has it been for the retail industry? The retail industry, I think, from what I've heard is a little bit slower, although I feel like stores are doing well with people coming in buying with intent. Um, I think last year you would get a lot of passerbys, they would come in and kind of, you know, browse and, and look at what we have and then kind of just mosey on out. But this year I feel like people are coming in and purchasing items, um, more and more these days, which is really nice. It's really helpful. And what are some of the big fashion trends this summer that you've seen? So I feel like color is still really in. Um, lots of florals, floral dresses, uh, maxi dresses, but then you also have like that really beachy style, you know, uh, the simple white shirt to throw over your bikini, denim shorts, denim cutoffs. Um, that's still and I think always will be in for a long time. 
Okay, so good to know that my wardrobe is still in. That's really refreshing to hear. Yes. <laughs> You go, Emma. <laughs> Yay, thanks. Uh, now let's talk about, you know, we were just kind of doing some pre-roll um, in that video right before we introduced you. So we had a lot that we were talking about last year with regards to, you know, the magazine and with regards to Fashion Week. Can you tell us how 2020 has been different and what Fashion Week this year is going to be since, you know, we really can't do the same, the same thing as usual? So 2020 is definitely put a spin on things um the magazine i have not done as of yet uh i just kind of had to step away from it a little bit um there might be a possible winter issue but that's still kind of into play right now and as for mv fashion week obviously i had to cancel it for this year but next year we're planning something really great it'll be really fantastic i can't wait for it that sounds awesome. So how have island businesses kind of been involved with that over the years? Uh, I think with island businesses, it's a lot of fun for them. It's a lot of work, but to showcase what they have in store, I feel like it brings in a customer that they might not have had previous. Um, and also, you know, to get island girls and guys all involved with the stores to showcase their styles. It's just such a really fun night and uh, we all we all just have a really good time at these shows. So it's it's a lot of fun. All right, so next year, Colin, I'm sure we're gonna be there covering this, right? <laughs> yes, well, we, we, we tried to cover it last year. Um, actually, I had to fight with every, all the other uh, camera guys from, from, other, um, from other outlets. Uh, so just like I was just like anybody else trying to trying to get in there and get a get a picture and a video, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, last year it was so interesting because it was like a five year break with no fashion week, and then last year was such an incredible success, and everybody was looking forward to this year, and um, and then COVID, you know, and it just there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, we can't have anybody gathering in that kind of um, close space to do this yeah. um and of course publishing trainers in the same position i am with publishing has just been tough um, we're doing these live shows and and trying to as you know we've talked about trying to put some more newsy kind of stuff together which we're trying to do but we'll see where that goes absolutely so trina in talking about what would have been fashion week this year what would you predict would be for the you know new fall trends what would you have expected to see in this lineup if you you know if we were able to have it i think for this fall i i truly feel that we're still in a somewhat casual mode so i see more comfortable jackets like um you know, everything's not as fitted. Um, I definitely see more leisure wear coming into play. A lot of just like comfortable footwear, you know, sneakers will still be in style. Uh, loafers are coming out, you know, it's just, uh, it's all about being comfortable yet looking really chic. So I think those are coming into play this fall. I'll tell you, that's a big relief to hear comfort and you know, leisure wear. I'm yeah, really not I'm going for form fitting. I'm all about comfort this year. <laughs> all about it. It's really nice. Well, because I mean, what else do you do in quarantine, right? We all sit around and we eat and we watch TV and we try to figure out our lives. And it's just like, I mean, what else? What else are we doing? Come on, man. Please right? don't try to get me in all the fitted turtleneck dresses. I have this one dress that I bought and I put it on. And I was like, you know what? This is for 2021. <laughs> Yeah, this is just yeah. and you know what's funny? I hear a lot of women these days. I work um, I work a few hours at a store called the Glass House in Vineyard Haven, and a lot of women are saying, "Well, where where would I wear this? You know, where am I going to wear this this year?" Yeah. And uh, the trick is to say, or you do say, you know, well, buy it buy it this year and wear it next year, or right. or wear you know, it for yourself. Create your own party. Wear it for yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, wear it for yourself, definitely. Always. That should always be the rule. So let's talk about, shifting gears just slightly, the magazine. Let's talk about some of the content in there. So when this next issue someday comes out, which I'm very, very excited for, what can people expect to see if they've maybe never read it before and this would be their first issue that they're looking forward to? 
I I think it's gonna follow along the same guidelines. There'll be lots of style and I'm sorry, there's a little interference. Sorry about that. There's My fault. um there'll be still a lot of showcase styles uh, from the stores that are in stores at the moment um, because that's always you know the big push with having dress MV is that whatever's in the magazine you can purchase in the store that day um, but I think you know I'd like to have a lot more how to's like how to style this how to dress how to wear uh, maybe some more in-depth articles I'd like to feature and try and get some some cool like food and restaurants in there as oh, well. Oh, that sounds I so want good. A, like a well-rounded lifestyle magazine. So I'm working on a few things while I have this time, which is really nice. Awesome. So we actually have somebody else here tonight. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> now, Brian, <laughs> we're going to have to get some of your fashion tips tonight. What's in for uh, men's fashion? For well, I think it goes in the same vein when you're talking about simple and chic and it, it dictates what we're going through right now, what we're going to wear, because that's what you're in most of the day, right? You're in your sandals, yeah. you're in your shorts, and you want to be comfortable because you're not going out anywhere to impress anybody. You're taking the takeout dining and this, that, and the other thing. But uh, I just wanted to comment on the stores and the way that the traffic has been handled. It's all changing because people can view some stuff online or they'll see it in your magazine and they do buy with a purpose. They'll come in and they'll buy. So there's that, that average person walking around. I was just about the Dominion a couple weeks ago, completely packed. I mean, just the streets and people were going around shopping, but most yeah, people would go really in and say, busy. yeah, they want Well, I had a friend that was in from out of town and he went into the jewelry shop that we did a, 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 a segment on and he dropped, you know, a grand. You know, I, he, nice. he he knew he was getting something for his wife for her anniversary, and he's like, I can't say what it is because she hasn't got it yet. Aww. You know, but like, there's stuff that you can only get in Martha's Vineyard too, which is so unique and so great. You know, I, I bought my typical T-shirt and sweatshirt, you know, because I'm that guy. You know, but he goes in and he and he'll buy stuff. You know, he'll, he'll say, look, I, I want to go here, and I and I didn't tell him either. I didn't say, hey, go to this shop. He was just waltzed in there himself, and, and it's like, yep, yeah, I'm buying with a purpose. I want this. You know, and. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. I actually sent my husband to um, Juniper on the island because I wanted to get the gray coasters. I don't know, Trina, if you've seen those before, but the the coasters that were kind of do everywhere. they have like kind of like um, a tassel or maybe a shag kind of type deal on the ends or they have those they different. But these ones are the um, I'm like of course I didn't take a picture of them, um, but they were stone gray and they had the like white um, island outline on them. And uh, I loved yes, it. Like, yeah. it's so simple and perfect. So I sent my husband in specifically, you know, for those. But I think that it was just so interesting that you're saying people are shopping with intent. Because I think there's that thought of, like, if I'm going to go into a store, then I'm mm -hmm. going to make it, you know, worth my while. I'm going to do something. You know, you come out with the intent of, of shopping. So um, I think that, yeah, it's very interesting and, and definitely kind of the way it is. Now, online shopping, on the other hand... <laughs> It's not. It's not that. It's online shopping is not the same. It's not the same. It's. It's like you're on a hunt. You know what I'm saying? You're a successful hunt. You went out looking for that thing that you didn't know you wanted and you got it. You know. Yeah, so it's like Target, except right. you know, well, virtually. One thing that was really cool is, is about Martha's Vineyard this year. I went down and did a photo shoot for a magazine. Um, it was a full cover story on just Martha's Vineyard, all the different stores and the fashions down there. And we went with 10 people, and we went to Egertown Lighthouse. We found a parking spot. Oh, it's my favorite place to Like, go. with, you know, and, and we kept it underneath a certain amount of people. We had a beautiful uh, a set of fashion down there from a couple of designers that we work with. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we went down, we shot, we got a parking spot in Martha's Vineyard. We had a great day. We went to the sandbar, had lunch. Um, but the fashion, really, just light, airy. Uh, bathing suits, we did bathing suits as well. We shot a whole line down there for Anne-Marie Lafonche. That was her uh, bathing suit line. And uh, let me tell you, it's just, I had a fantastic day. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely Sounds fantastic. Really nice. Well, the thing is, that you've never seen Martha's Vineyard with, with a little bit less people, you know? And right. I was just like, That's I'm going to exploit that. You know, I'm going to get that parking spot, and I'm going to go out and do a photo shoot down there because it's really difficult. And this time this year, it was like glass. It just went so smooth. We were done with two hours of spare sitting at the sandbar having margaritas. That sounds amazing. What's, what's strange about this year is that you'll get a day where you 
it, it, it's like a normal August where you cannot find a parking spot on uh, State Beach. Right. Anywhere. And then the next day you'll be able to find parking. It's really strange. It's uh, it's uh, right. It's 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 not predictable. Like you would think that you know I'm not going there for the month because that's going to be it's absolutely packed. And we went there. And I'm like I, I got a couple plans. We're going to drop the stuff off. I'm going to run around. I'm going <laughs> to park down here and I'll take an Uber back. And and I go and there's a parking spot. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like Christmas in in, ju- in June. You know what's going on here? You know. It's the little things that count. Yeah, right. the little things. It was just, it was great. I mean, I the last time I saw you, we were actually we were having um, dinner at Sandbar. We were just sitting around having a good time, but it was yeah, really busy. Yeah. And we were rushed to get on the ferry and do the same thing. This time I went down and it's like I had hours to spare. It was just, it was, it was more relaxed. Yeah, it was definitely more relaxed. And I could find space and I didn't have to wait 20 minutes to sit down in the seat. It was all right there. And then the new thing now is you just scan the picture for the menus. Oh, and yeah. There's the whole menu. So I could be traveling, you know, to downtown Eggertown and say, I want to go this. I go on this week, Miles my, my Vineyard, go on that. And then when I go to their webpage, I have the whole menu right oh, in my hand. There it is. Yeah. 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 So now, get, finding different ways to do stuff. You know? Speaking of, of photo shoots and fun things, like what you were doing over at Lighthouse, amazing place to shoot, one of my favorites. Trina, mm-hmm. what are some places that you recommend that's your favorite place to shoot on the island? I mean, I, I like Edgartown Lighthouse. It's it's an iconic spot. You know, it's really beautiful. You have the water, you have the lighthouse, you have the beach, you have those, you know, walkways with the greenery on both sides. But there's also a place called Blackwater Pond Reserve. Um, I really love that spot. It's, it's different. It's more woodsy. Um, there's a lot of areas there. And then, you know, there's a lot of secret spots that we kind of find and shoot just because it's more private and uh, you don't get a lot of interruption with people, you know, so I can't really give those out, but there's a lot of good <laughs> I was so waiting. I was like sitting there like my ears just went <laughs> Right, I know you, know you were listening. <laughs> you, were, you were just had that ear out. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we, we did it actually with Andrea too. Andrea was the cover model for that. And she was also the the last year going down there with us in Mother Divinity. But I miss you guys terribly. It was so yeah, much fun last year. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, just this year, the last year, you know. Ugh, you yeah. Know? It's crazy because last year I feel like I spent so much more time over there. And then this year I haven't spent half as much time on the island. I mean, it was last year we were over there a lot, not only just because we love it, but because we were getting married. And then this year it's just like, I think we I went over like maybe twice this summer maybe yeah twice and then i'm going back for our anniversary and that's it and it's wow. it's it's sad because i i miss it and i miss being there every week but it's really nice to hear all these like good stories and see all of your pictures and see about you know the fashion and you know the lifestyle and and just kind of keep up with everything that you're doing because your feed really is just it brings you back you know it makes yeah. you feel like you're back home so i thank always you. appreciate that thank you So, all right, guys, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break, and then we are going to come right back. Stay tuned. There is no better place to take in the sweeping views of Edgar Town Harbor while enjoying fresh local seafood and cold drinks than the seafood shanty on Dock Street. With views from, well, any seat in the restaurant, everyone gets a water view. Whether resting in the air-conditioned dining room on the first floor or in the open air upstairs on the island's largest deck, this is the place where you realize you have everything you came to Martha's Vineyard for. The seafood shanty is where the seafood and the view of the sea meet. Open daily for lunch and dinner and nightlife entertainment. Located in the Edgartown Triangle, Trader Fred's is a discount haven for locals and tourists. From fishing bait to boogie boards to bikinis, Fred's has what you need. If you didn't find what you wanted, then you must have missed it. A blistering day on the island can quickly turn into a cool retreat at sea with MV Ocean Sports' dynamic array of water sport activities. From parasailing high above the vineyard sound to skimming across its glassy surface on your very own jet ski, MV Ocean Sports has everything fun for everyone. MV Ocean Sports focuses on fun activities the whole family can participate in, including water skiing, wakeboarding, kneeboarding, and tubing. Open daily with sunset specials. Visit MVOceanSports.com for more information. Step back in time. The Eggertown Diner at 65 Main Street offers classic, delicious comfort food at affordable prices. Serving breakfast all day, lunch, and dinner. Discover why everyone loves the Eggertown Diner. 
Thank you guys all so much for staying with us. Now, throughout this entire show tonight, we have really highlighted some of the best places to go, the wonderful food, and really just talked about all of the great places on Martha's Vineyard, which is something that we do every week, of course. We bring you all of that. But there's a little bit of news that I uncovered this week that, Colin, I'd like to kind of run by you and see what your opinion is on this. I'm sure everyone saw an Islanders talk that they said there were a lot more enrollments in school this year. There are a lot more people going for post office boxes. And it seems like people are trying to, you know, grow the population on the island and people are trying to be there there more often year round. Have you seen any, you know, feedback or chatter that speaks to, you know, more people living year round on the island? Oh, definitely. I mean, that was it started back in, uh, I guess, March. Even um, people started arriving that had second houses here. Um, you know, I mean, if you were in a city where where COVID was was running wild and you had an opportunity to be somewhere that was away from that uh you know anybody would take that opportunity of course um so uh we did see a a big influx of people in fact uh you know early on we were seeing i I talked to clients you know that owned car rental companies and there was a lot of one-way traffic people dropping off cars here and they were having problems trying to get them back off island because there was so many cars here um but the I think what we're what we will see here is we won't see the typical uh, Labor Day and then the big departure of everybody leaving uh, and then slowly coming back on the weekends and things like that uh, and having the fall season. I think we're we're probably barely going to notice the difference between August and September. So you think um, it's going to stay consistently busy? Yeah, I mean, I think if we get if we get a uh, little bit more of a year-round population, that'd be good um, in some ways. I mean, it, it has increased a lot since when I first got here 25 years ago. I mean, it was everything was boarded up on in the winter. There was there was really nothing to do. Well, no, you're, um, you're gonna you're definitely gonna have a lot more people staying year-round. If you look at islands like Barbados, like paying people to come live there, the Czech Republic, all these people, because now we found out we can re- work remote. That's going to make a huge change. Your island is beautiful. Who wouldn't want to live there and work remote? I do. You know? I just can't get my husband to do it. It's a it's a change in culture. <laughs> it's a change in culture. And you're going to find there's going to be people down there. Those grocery stores better be prepared because they weren't in the spring. And, you know, how many places are just going to stay open a little bit longer? Or, like, Mikado is open all year round. They're going to be busy. You know, these places that are open. You're going to have a, a migration. There's no doubt. Oh, definitely. And I think that... Uh that we're already seeing that. I mean, I think that, that school is going to pay, play a big part of that as well. Um, and my wife, Trina, has been much more involved in, in following what's going to happen with that. I mean, they're trying to do the same things that they've done um, in other states, um, you know, doing a, a, a slow start with, um, you know, not doing the physical uh, school the first week and then going into the to, to, I think a couple days a week or something, but um, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's just up in the air as to what's going to happen. And I think the population here will also depend on on kids in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, what do you guys think? What's your prediction for the fall? Is there? Are you guys anxious about the girls going back to school, or is it kind of one of those things that you're excited to get them out of the house and get them back? <laughs> I'm I'm super hesitant okay. to send them back. I mm-hmm. think. I think I'd rather have them do a lot of Zoom school. Um, it just, there's so many unanswered questions. I think that not only I, but I, all parents have, you know, and, you know, the news right now with schools already open and headed back. I mean, you know, you can't believe everything on the news, but there is some ounce of truth to it when they say, you know, the kids have, been testing for COVID and you know it kind of it kind of makes you think a little bit you know is this the best thing um does it matter no matter how much safety there is um can it help prevent the spread of COVID I, I don't really know and they're kids you know it's hard to keep them separated so it's it's going to be a struggle, I think, for the kids as well as for the teachers and for the you know who's going to monitor the social distancing. There's just a lot of questions 
um, that's yet to be had and to answer, you know? Absolutely. And do you guys have any kind of, you know, plan in mind that you're like, well, if they're going to be going back on Zoom, are they going to be going back in person? If they told you that, you know, the kids were going to be going back in person, would you have an alternate plan set up? Or do you know parents that are setting up an alternate plan just in case they do request? I mean, I, I think some parents are already, you know, thinking about possible homeschooling or, you know, maybe trying to set up zoom for the entire year i i personally think i would like zoom for the entire year should i be saying that but (laughs) you know it's just something that i think all parents with children have to consider um it's just it's a really tough time right now and it's it's really hard because you want your kids to socialize and and have somewhat of a normal school um you know day but yeah. I don't think at this time in this year of 2020, that's really possible. Well, I think, I think you should leverage technology. I mean, if it's there and the kids can learn at home, why not do it? And it's completely safe. You know, there's, there's no questions yeah. there, right? I mean, I, I agree. So, I think that they should have, uh, you know, the school could be done. Obviously, technology has shown that we can do that through Zoom. Uh, where the kids have uh, problems is that they can't get together with their friends right. and mm-hmm. if they were to, to do the continue the zoom school but have uh, school sponsored outings where where groups of kids could get together mm-hmm. but it's monitored and it's an hour long and it's outdoors mm-hmm. um, I think that would be much more controlled that would take care of that interaction with other kids and still keep them safe. And so you're talking, you're saying, you're saying like have like a recess, you know, have like out of school outings where they're fully monitored and not worrying about that aspect of right. being trapped in a classroom together, all together. That's great. I mean, that's. I agree. And you no, have a I small mean, that, population that the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, that's it's an interesting point, and I've thought a lot. I've talked to you know quite a few people about this, um, so I just think it's it's very interesting to get a as many perspectives as as possible and of course i you know i have no horse in this race i we don't have any any kids <laughs> yet you know you the horse in this race right I, I love it. So, <laughs> you know um um but yeah no it's um it's just such an interesting fascinating topic and especially for a place such as the island that you know is so very secluded and really depends on on you know it's it's year-round community to kind of help be a village for yeah. for all the kids and for everybody there. So I think it's interesting that there's a potential uptick of having a larger community um, this year. I think people really coming down early have probably recognized the beauty in the off season of the island, which I think is something that is just so well, imagine if so you're special. quarantined in Martha's Vineyard. That would be my yeah, life. I'd exactly. never leave my It'd be house. Like, like <laughs> uh, then you finally figured out, hey, this is not a bad deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm staying. <laughs> no, Jake always laughed Wait. at me. I loved February. You know, it's people that are here, they're still, they're staying. They're having extended stays. They're not yeah. leaving, which mm. is interesting just because, I mean, their kids, I mean, they're not going back to school. You know, they'll yeah. do Zoom school and they're not going back to work. So right. they're saying to themselves, why not stay? You know, again, working from remote, learning remote. That's the new, that's the new thing. I'm excited yeah. for Perfect. February on the island is actually my favorite, favorite time because it's like it's so quiet. There's nobody there, and hey, I really they, think don't it's they have a Christmas now too. Don't they have a Christmas parade or something like that? No. <laughs> no. Yes, they do. <laughs> She's like, don't they? <laughs> Christmas in Edgartown. It's so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Um, yeah. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for chatting with us tonight. I know that you know we've had a really great conversation here tonight, and I am very excited to see the winter edition if we do get to have one of Dressed MV. I would love, love, love to see that. Um, all right, guys. Posted. Yay! Thank you. And then they can also check out your website in the meantime, right? Dressed MV. Yes, dressedmv.com, and you can also follow us on Instagram at dressedmv. Awesome. And then I know that we also have for this week on Martha's Vineyard, we have our Facebook, we have our Instagram, and we have the website, of course, where you guys can come and check that out. So we have a lot. We also have the channel, the Martha's Vineyard channel, which is uh, now downloadable on, uh, uh, if you have Roku, if you have um, uh, Android TV, uh, Amazon Fire, and soon it will be up on uh, Apple TV as well. Yes. Uh, So it's the Martha's Vineyard channel. Um, we are also looking for other people to do shows so that we can populate this. Um, 
and we'd love to have my wife Trina do one for Dressed MV. Um, mm, so we'll see. A- we'll see. <laughs> I'm pretty nervous in front of this camera right now, so we'll uh, I'll, I'll need a little more practice, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks You're like fine. we have a, we have a lot in the me? works. <laughs> yeah, no, you you would do amazing. But I'm glad to hear about. A possible Dressed MV show? Dot, 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 question mark. But it looks like we have a lot in the works, both here and for Dressed MV. So everybody has a lot going on to look forward to coming up very soon. But for tonight, we're going to make that a wrap. Thank you guys all so very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks.